Okay, Brian Paul, you wanted to see my face. Here's the big reveal. Where are you? There you are. Okay, let me just face the camera. Oh, wrong way. All right, let me just keep going all the way around. There's a quicker way of doing this. Hold on. That's got it. That's not it. Right, I'm sure I've got this now. <laughs> Oh, what is that there? All right, let me find my bearings. Okay, there you are. Oh, the camera. Go up. There we are. Straighten up a bit. Back a bit. Back a bit. Bit more. Oh no, I've glitched outside. Is it safe to be outside yet? I can't get back in. I'll have to show you my face next time. Enjoy if you a takeover. This is Viewer Takeover, where we film every Monday night and then bring it to YouTube every Tuesday, sometimes, and sometimes not until super late, sometimes Wednesday, right? It happens. What are you going to do? My name is Brian Paul from this channel right here, PSVR Without Parole, and these gentlemen to your right, Dave from Dave Station VR. Here I am once again. Here he is. Hope everybody's having a good Monday, once Tuesday, again. when you watch this. Tune in after the show to see a special video of Dave Station oh. VR. <laughs> You don't have to. the Tony one. You should know. No, no, that's just for the chosen no, ones. You know what? Fast forward don't now and then come back and watch the rest of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret ending, man. And that guy on the far right hand side of the screen, AJ from the Underground PSVR Underground. How, how great is this, you guys? Where not only is PSVR like super hot right now and super gaining more momentum hot. once again, super. yeah. Um, but now we get to talk about next gen on top of it all. Oh, you oh mean we're God. not going to talk about Gorn for the next half hour? I am in heaven, you guys. I am in heaven. <laughs> that is pretty heaven, like AJ. Uh, we, like we, the first thing we want to do uh, on Viewer Takeover, as we always do, is thank a bunch of the awesome game cats out there. Uh, but the first person we want to thank uh, is the guy who sends us that amazing Viewer Takeover introduction. That is Tommy the Cat in a VR hat, uh, also known oh. as uh, the the game cat in the chat. Um, you want to know he, with me? Apparently, like shadow banned on YouTube or something. He's not allowed to talk on any YouTube channel anymore. Something went horribly wrong over there. But that I'm going to Twitter. Him. Hashtag free Tommy the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag free all the cats. Um, but he sent us an awesome viewer takeover introduction, guys. I mean, I mean, so far I laughed so many times during that minute. It was it was great. That is definitely one of my like top five favorite ones of all time. Uh, the great teleport and click turning uh, thing and. And of course, you know, Tommy the Cat's been around for a long, long time. And, you know, how could I forget uh, a Primus reference like that? Good call. Such a good band. There Such you go. a good band. Yeah. Uh, so if you have a viewer takeover introduction to submit to us, if you want to introduce next week's show, we, well, you can't because we've got a few in the queue. But get in the queue and send your short, sweet, seductive. Doesn't have to be anything fancy like Tommy the Cat. Show, show us your face and say, hey, my name is whatever. Welcome to viewer takeover without parole at gmail.com. But Tommy the Cat is not the only person we want to thank this week. Is he, AJ? No, sir. We would like to thank these people, Brian. Which people? Oh, yeah. Th th these, these people. people. Right there? These people down there. These people <laughs> went to patreon.com slash without parole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're the ones giving us a dollar or more every single month. You guys are keeping the channel running along, of course, with all the people donating during streams. Uh, we love all of you. Thank you very, very much. Patreon.com slash without parole games to get on this illustrious chat list with all the illustrious cats. Now, we'd also like to thank those who like to show their allegiance. And there, there are several different ways you can you can support us, Brian. Not just Patreon, not just sending in the viewer takeover intros. Not just with wonderful. your money. <laughs> yes. No, that's that's the last thing we care about. But you can also change your name to something GameCat, something GameCat adjacent, as you like to say. And this week, we've got one very special new GameCat to welcome into the GameCat. Dojo. Ooh, I know this guy. Let me read it off. Yes. Uncle JC, that stray game cat. He put a hashtag game cat in the comments to let us know, like a boss. Oh, yeah. um, when you change your name, if you change your name, I guess win is a better way to say it. It's inevitable, right? If you're watching this. Eventually, um, just, everyone's going to be a cat. I hope so. So when you change your name, just throw the hashtag game cat in there and we will catch you 
and talk about cheer. But thank you, Uncle JC. Uh, he came over from my channel. I don't know how he found me before you guys. That doesn't even make any sense to me. But no idea. Here he is. No He's idea. part of the crew. I'll tell Can't you, you, every single time, uh, the speech chat doesn't read his name properly. Uh, so I'm, I'm, it's always mispronouncing it. And I, yeah. and I, all I think of is full house. So I'm always calling him Uncle Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so no offense, but I will definitely work on calling you Uncle JC from now on. Uh, great name. Great name. Uh, Guys, we so we got a new segment for viewer takeover, right? Like uh, last Woo! week, Joe Joe Mojo, the Mellow Game Cat, sent. Uh, uh, you know, we, we talked about his band a little bit. Uh, AJ made a sound, so I wanted to make a sound too, like, <laughs> to like to intro the, the celebration. Yeah. You know, yeah. fireworks. And, and, and I, I'm going to get the name of the band wrong. Is it Angel Crypt? And no, that's right. Oh, good. Uh, so, and, and, and we played and we played a little bit of his music down below. But you know what? Like we, this is viewer takeover. We want uh, to take this time, obviously, to showcase any of the talents any of the game cats might have. So if you got any cool things that you've done, awesome. Uh, but one of the things we got this week, this week, uh, was from James James over on Discord, and he showed us this clip that he saved on uh, on his one of his Saints and Sinners streams. Let's take a look. Roll the clip. Let's take. a We have to keep our voices down. I'm in a bind and I need to. What? How crazy was that? I've seen a lot of glitches and glitches can sometimes. This is an example of a good glitch where like it's so freaking funny uh, that it actually like makes it enhances the experience. Um, this is definitely one of those. I can't believe when he chopped his head off, it turned races. Yeah, I've never seen that before ever. Apparently, he's the just, apparently he just became very pale because he's dead now. <laughs> I think he was already maybe no. He, wasn't he, light he, he, he turned into light like light. a blonde hair, blue eyes. Oh, I saw it. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was good stuff. Um, I, and honestly, I, I I think when he first showed me the clip, I was like, what, 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 what? You know, I was like, Appar apparently, I don't see. Didn't race. even notice right away. <laughs> Brian's colorblind. I, 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 don't, I am colorblind. We don't we don't look at the world through that lens, do no, we? No, man. Fucking without parole, we love everybody equally. Uh, well, I don't know. I love you guys probably a little bit more than everyone else, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, uh, people from Guyana, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, we love everybody. <laughs> from where? What? <laughs> <laughs> there, there was actually there was actually a great. No, one of my best friends growing up was from Guyana. It just popped into my head out of nowhere. I don't know. <laughs> right on. Um. All right. Guys, I think uh, I think we need to get the, the show started here. Yeah, uh, the thing we do on Viewer Takeover is read your comments. Uh, we either go, uh, go to Discord, uh, which, by the way, you should join our Discord anyway. The link is in the description down below. Uh, join our Discord and leave your Viewer Takeover question in the Viewer Takeover channel. Or you can just go to any of our videos and leave hashtag Viewer Takeover, all one word, in a comment. And then leave your question there, and we will find it. We'll search for it. Maybe we'll even include it in this show. The first question comes to us from Ground Control from last week's episode of Viewer Takeover writes, Hey guys, so I'm sure you already know most game systems don't hit their stride until the second or third year of release when developers have had time to really learn the system. With the PS5 coming out soon, my concern is that developers will abandon the PSVR when the new system is out uh, at a time where they finally started learning how to best utilize the system. Am I alone in this concern? Hashtag Viewer Takeover. What do you guys think about this? I don't think you're alone, but I definitely am of the opposite mindset where... I think developers are going to have more power, more capability of, of developing on VR without such a hassle. That's like saying when PS3 went to PS4, are less developers going to make games because it has it's easier to develop for than the PS3? I don't think so. I think it's going to be I think we're going to have more PSVR games, more potential AAA PSVR games that have like a VR mode of some sort, because ultimately this gen, this next gen coming up is going to have is uh, going to make it easier for developers and that's going to be a good thing way easier and i think that unreal engine demo uh, unreal engine Ooh. 5 oh, uh, yeah. exemplified just how easy they're going to make it on developers and i think that playstation vr is in a like a pretty unique position right it's, it's, a, it's in a unique situation where when psvr debuted on playstation 4 we were kind of already it was starting at a disadvantage where like the hardware almost wasn't up to the task to begin with this wasn't like PlayStation One, where like you, you launched and it just got better and better and better. This this was oh man, like the hardware kind of was just cutting it to begin with. Um, so I, I think we've been we've been kind of desperate for this next gen upgrade for a while now. We've been really looking forward to it. Um, will they abandon PSVR uh, like or PSVR on PlayStation Four? I don't think so, uh, but I think we're going to see a whole lot more of that cross gen 
This game is available on PlayStation 4 and even better on PlayStation 5 example. If that makes sense. Yeah, I agree with that. I think with any console generation shift, um, you know, you game developers go where the markets are at the end of the day. And even though VR is a niche market, the biggest subset of that niche market is on PS4 right now. So it makes sense financially to keep releasing those games, especially if you can also play them on PS5, if that's what you traded in your PS4 for. Yeah. Um, there's going to be like at least a lead time of a year or two for a lot of people to even upgrade. So I think they're aware of that. You know, their marketing teams have probably figured this out. Although if we get in like three man dev teams, I don't know where that comes in, but it really like I expect to see quite a few PS4, PSVR games, even after PS5 comes out. Yeah. Just like we saw new PS3 releases coming out, you know, for a while after the PS4 dropped. I would say so. I would say so. Part of Ground Control's question that we actually uh, we actually left out was that he's not going to be able to buy a PlayStation 5 or PSVR 2 at launch. Uh, and so this is kind of where a lot of his concern is coming from. Um, I, th I think a lot of developers are going to be really, really happy to finally take advantage of, you know, a, a lot more power. Um, so I don't I don't know if we're going to see I don't know if we're going to see people stick around on PlayStation 4 quite as long as a developer normally would stick around on a current gen console. Um, yeah, the other thing too, to keep in mind is that like, um, you know, a lot of dev teams don't even have even big dev teams don't even have a PS5 dev kit yet. Um, I was talking to uh, Skydance, the people who made Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, potentially one of the best games. I'm easily one of the best games on PSVR. They don't have a PS5 dev kit. Right. So if they don't have it, then who does? You know what I mean? Like that's pretty common. It's going to take this point. time for them to uh, to get up to the point where they can even develop for the system. So I think yeah, we'll still see plenty of PS4 stuff. A lot of first party will have the dev kits first, and then the, yeah, for the sure. independent developers will get it afterward. Well, before dev kits come out, people are already like tons and tons of developers are already working on PlayStation Five games because most games you know are, are developed on PCs, and so they're right. they're working with an assumed set of specifications uh, before they get their PlayStation Five dev kit, and then they move True. they move everything over there. So uh, dev kits not being out is, isn't sense. that uncommon, I think, in, in this span or this uh, this long before launch. Although, I mean, it should be any time now, any time now. We're getting real close. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, all right, next question. Question number two. This comes from Peter Johnson over at the Games Cast. He says, watching silently from the shadows. Until I heard you briefly touching on this thought, Brian. Do you think it's possible that the Moves 2.0 release alongside or in close proximity to the launch of the PS5? Stay awesome. Hashtag viewer takeover. Hashtag it's a thing. Um, but let me reiterate the thing he's talking about. I think okay. that I that I brought up, <clears throat> and I, and it's it's that I don't. It's it's abundantly clear that uh, that I don't work for Sony, and because anytime I'm like Sony should do this, they always go do something completely different. Yeah. But what I think Sony should do, <laughs> and this is what Peter Johnson is talking about, uh, is that they should release new Move controllers sometime in the next couple months, uh, leading up to PlayStation 5's launch, to to even further spread out the amount of purchases that we have to make. New controllers now, new console at the end of the year, new headset the year after. Just really spread those purchases out and make those new move controllers, obviously with everything we want, uh, with analog sticks, the whole deal. Make them compatible with the current PlayStation 4 and, of course, forward compatible with PlayStation 5 and PSVR 2. Go, hey, here's your new controllers, guys. They're $100 each, but they're going to last you like for the next eight years. And I think a lot of people would be like, yeah, that's totally fair. That's down. They work now. They'll work later. We're happy. That's my theory. It's probably inaccurate, but that's what I would do. If I was Sony, I think it's a little early, but that is, in my opinion, would be the best stopgap between this and the next PSVR headset is an updated form of controllers with, you know, inside out tracking, um, you know, some kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I know some of the technology is still developing as well. Um, and really, I don't expect this to be at launch or near launch of PS5 at all. I think at best, this is like months and months later or like a year or it's just going to be like two years and then we get another PSVR. Yeah, so as far as inside out tracking, that actually requires a new headset because it's it's inside out tracking from the headset with cameras on your face that are right. pointing outwards. So um, I think what they would have to do is future proof it so that it could eventually work with inside out tracking, right. but then also still work with the PlayStation camera, which if I try to think about it, that looks freakish in my mind. Like, you know, picture like an Oculus 
touch controller, but with a giant rubber ball on top of it or something like that. It would be pretty ridiculous looking. Yeah. Um, if they don't figure out like a really good way to cover both the angles there. Um, and I feel like it has to be both back and forward compatible when they release it. So we'll see, I guess. I don't know um, how soon I'd expect that. <clears throat> it's a tough call yeah. because when I think about this, I don't picture a light ball at the end of it. I picture them having some kind of form of not inside out tracking, but tracking that does not require uh, lighting. And so, it, it, but that's, you know, again, I don't, I don't, Sony has been on the cutting edge of all this stuff and, and releasing patent after patent after patent. And so we don't really know what their plans are for the next moves. Uh, of, you know, it, they might skip inside out tracking altogether. I doubt it, but it's a possibility. Oh, I doubt it too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, a couple months from now, there could be some new form of tracking or new technology that, and then, and then, you know, if they were to go and do that, then it'd be outdated. So I think they're going to take their time a little bit and make sure they develop something, like you said, that's cutting edge that they will be able to have for five, 10 years down the line once it releases. Like you said, you compared it to like another console, how PCs, you constantly replace pieces of it and this and that, you know, console stuff, you want to buy it and you want to have it for a long time. It's like an investment. Yeah. Yeah. That's how, that's how Sony's doing everything, man. Whereas Oculus is releasing new headsets pretty much every year or every two years. Uh, Sony's been like, here you go. PlayStation VR, this is your headset until the next headset uh, six years later. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I would rather wait and wait just a little bit longer. I know a lot of people are antsy, and, and I am too, but I would rather just wait just a teeny bit longer and get something that could last 10 years. This is how it gets at the end of every console generation. To play, you know, At the end of the PS2 generation, I was like, man, you know, like people getting HD TVs and, and you know, really desperate for big open world games and stuff. And, uh, and it was just like, man, we need that PlayStation 3 now, you know? And I think that's why the Xbox 360 sold so well, because people were fucking chomping at the bit for a new next gen console and xbox 360 came out good price point it was like could do all that stuff and so sometimes you're just ready for it and that's what but that's what console generations are all about at the end you're like man this is not quite cutting it and then suddenly you're like boom blown away for years so that's just the difference between pc and console gamers now, can we uh, briefly speculate here a technological question that I don't think any of us actually know the answer to? <laughs> Probably but, not. So the camera right now. Uses, I, I do. I uh, just can't say anything yet. <laughs> We're all under embargo. Sony. His <laughs> uncle works at Sony. I'm embargoed. So, yeah. Um, so the camera right now is, as far as I can tell, just based on normal light tracking, not infrared light, not any kind of other light. It's just a ball of light that it's looking for. Um, I think the Quest controllers, the inside out tracking is an IR thing in that halo around the controllers that the cameras are picking up on. Do you think it'd be possible to, for them to update this camera so it can see infrared? Is that even possible? Is that a thing you can do with like a, cause then we could have one that works both inside out and outside in with the camera. If it had infrared tracking on it, like a Wii mode or something. Um, I thought someone told me before. Now I don't know this for sure, but I thought somebody told me before that it actually does switch to like an infrared mode, um, which is why you can't like show the camera, like have the video camera going and it track you at the same time. But I don't actually know. The I mean, if it if that. it does have an infrared mode, then that would kind of get us half the way there in terms of being able to design controllers that don't have that big bulbous thing on the top. Because mm. I think you know, if it's not tracking for a ball of light. It's looking right. for a point of light, kind of like right. the Quest controllers are. Um, maybe it could work. Who knows? I bet somebody in the comments has an answer to this question. I'm sure they do. Nice. Well, we're looking forward to Let seeing that comment. Yeah. Nice. And then our final question. Our final answer, final question comes this isn't from Jeopardy, AJ. <laughs> you mean uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Um, no, Final Jeopardy. Final Jeopardy, isn't that, and the answer isn't that a is, movie? No, it's the last round. No, it's the and last the, and, and the Jeopardy answer is, is right. and, and the, the answer Jeopardy, is okay. from Perfected. Insanity. So, so confused right now. <laughs> I'm so thrown off right now. All right, Perfected Insanity guys writes in through the Discord says hashtag Viewer Takeover. Do you think that the next iteration of VR on PS5 will match flat screen sooner graphically due to twice the processing power or? Will the devs focus more development time on implementing more intuitive controls or both? Things that keep me up at night, LOL. <laughs> Meow. Meow. Basically, he's asking, do you think the what you see in the headset is going to be closer to what you see on the social screen output? 
Well, I think, yeah, it's going to telescope because, like, you know, the amount of power that we have, it's just easier to get way further ahead graphically than you can right now. So it's going to be a huge leap. And I think that we won't have to wait that long to see people take advantage of it. But they won't take advantage of it as well as they possibly could until, like, three years from now. Right. Just like any console generation, any technology they're developing for. As far as the... Um, are the devs going to focus more on implementing more intuitive controls? I think devs in general have to kind of establish a language of like what controls work for pretty much any game. Because if you play a flat screen game, you know X is jump. X is fucking always jump, no matter what. And they don't have a language like that. So once they establish that, I think they won't even have to really spend development time on figuring that out. Um, but we're not there yet. So... And it really relies on the, the hardware manufacturers to come out with something better that they can use that's more intuitive. So I don't know. Okay. But graphics, I think that's coming uh, pretty quick. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. It takes so long for developers to really take full use of any new piece of hardware. And the PlayStation 5 is so powerful, and it's going to be able to you know do things that we've never seen before. And so... I think we, I think I kind of mentioned hyperbolically uh, on last week's episode, maybe on Gamescast, that it's almost like dealing with unlimited power at first because they're you know some something like Ubisoft is <laughs> yeah right um, somebody's like Ubisoft is going to come in and be like okay we're used to making these big open world games on on hardware like the Xbox One or the PlayStation Four uh, and and be like oh wow now we can do that and so much more so much more and so to be able to like transfer that right into VR is not going to be an issue. Um, it's going to take them years, like Dave said, to uh, to really start taking advantage of the hardware. So I, I think at launch, I, th I think we're going to see some parity as far as VR and flat screen stuff goes. Uh, the games are going to look practically identical, I think, in, the, on a, on, in VR as they do on the I flat screen. So. Well, I mean, Somebody... you're getting to a point now with quality of, of detail in game graphics that like after a certain margin, it doesn't even really matter that much anymore. Like in VR, if we got to a really good looking launch PS4 game level of quality, that would be plenty. That would be more than enough. That'd be incredible. Right. Um, whereas like on flat screens, they're just keeping up the like incremental, like, okay, it looks still really goddamn good, but there's a lot more little pixels and stuff. Um, Somebody told I, me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Somebody told me in or was having a discussion, one of the cats were having a discussion about like, right. is. The jump from, uh, you know, PSVR Gen 1 with the PS4 to PS5, it's going to be like, they're like, oh, it's it's like PS1 to PS2. I think it's going to be a much greater leap in terms of processing power, like you said, and the graphical fidelity, stuff like that. I mean, it it is going from 4.6 teraflops on the Pro to like 10.6, something like that, 10.2. Um, so... It's it's a big jump. It's going to be much bigger. It's going to be going more like from PS1 to like PS3, maybe. That's what I thought. Um, yeah. Maybe even like almost PS4. Um, well, not PS4 mm. Pro, but yeah. yeah. But but we're it, it is going to be skipping a generation here. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's definitely going to. And and to their uh, question, I mean, yeah, that's going to be part of that. And I think again, I agree with Dave and both of you that it's going to be something that over time. Imagine by the end of the PS5 life cycle, uh, how freaking good the VR games are going to look. It's going to be ridiculous. Yeah, it always drives me crazy when somebody says uh, that we're 20 years away from uh, from photorealistic graphics in VR. I'm like, I think we're literally six months away. Like, if you take Resident Evil 7 and just kind of boost uh, boost the uh, the fidelity, boost the, the detail, boost the uh, resolution, like, that's fucking there, man. That's it. Yeah, like, pretty close. So pretty close. close. So close. So I mean, I, I think I think we are way closer than most people think to having some cutting edge graphics in VR. It's gonna be too real for some people to handle. Good. It's gonna be amazing. Good. I know. I can't wait. Dude, <laughs> you know, it's the number of people that are too scared to play Resident Evil Seven. God bless. Dude, all. there are people that are too scared to play like Creed and stuff, and Creed. and yeah, I mean, like they see something running at them and they freak out, you know. <laughs> Um, it's, it's not just like, forget horror games. Like there's stuff that is too scary for people already as is, that isn't even meant to be scary because it's just, you know, that really, you saw, tell me, you saw this video of this dude playing Richie's plank experience oh, jumped into his and, and jumped yeah. into his TV. That's oh, Richie's there? plank experience. Dog. That's what like I'm talking old, about. Old people forget like <laughs> that you can't just do anything. 
Dude, not in just VR. old people. My friend did that. My friend skydiving. Like, what's he doing? He's skydiving. He's like, he yeah, he, he was, and went, Yeah, he wanted to just be free, dude. I had my my friend freaking dive kicked his TV playing drunken bar fight. I mean, Jesus. look at drunken Wait, bar he, fight. He broke his TV over drunken bar yes. fight. That's gonna be the yes. worst waste yep. of money ever. Yep. Was he? Yeah, I'm just telling you, man. The, the imagination is powerful, man. Was he drunk? Is the <laughs> question. He was drunk. Because I feel like it takes a next level of immersion, next level. Dude, of- here's the thing. I've been very drunk playing VR many times, and I have never broken But you're an experienced like, gamer. This was th- and you, you're well, I think I always have in the back of my mind, like, it's not real life. I can't jump yeah. and fucking I, fly. Yeah, right. like, I, I do, know. too. But some people just get so into the moment, man. And, yeah, I always have, like, yeah. a chair behind me uh, just to make sure I'm not, like, just to make sure I'm facing the camera. I have, like, a chair behind me. A fan is no. good for that too, because you can feel the direction of the breeze, yeah. and you're like, "Oh, I'm oriented. If I'm facing here, I'm not." You know, yeah. shit's gonna get fan. real, man. Shit's gonna get really good. It's gonna get real good. A lot of people are gonna die in mm-hmm. VR. I can't wait to see some crazy videos next gen. <laughs> uh, be safe, guys. Be safe. Be safe. But I'll have a spotter you. for your loved ones too. Spot your loved ones, or just be like me, live alone, and don't give a fuck. Yeah, right. I'm I'm nervous, man, because tornado. I'm gonna be picking up tornado in just a couple weeks here, and uh, and I'm like, I I've never actually had to deal with anyone or anything else in my apartment when I play VR, right? So if I'm, can you imagine playing Resident Evil Seven and having her jump up on your lap or, or or scratching at your leg or something like that? Like I'm gonna, I'm oh that's gonna freak you out. Oh, yeah. I need to be prepared. I need to be prepared, or I need to kind of or I need to get a caged in area to make sure that she has a place to play while Daddy plays VR. Yeah. I uh, I will say Carlos has never messed with me when I was playing VR. He's never rubbed up against me. He's never jumped on me. He's never scratched at me or anything like that. Um, Carlos is generally yeah. uninterested in everything. Whenever I've seen him, though, is that pretty the case? much? Yeah, no, I think that's true. Um, belly rubs he likes, okay, but otherwise, <laughs> yeah, not a whole lot right that he's into. Awesome! I can't I can't wait to get Tornado on some of these streams, man. Uh, she's so fucking oh, yeah. cute, and every time I see new pictures and new videos of her, like I'm I'm not the kind of person to get excited about really anything. And every time I see her, I'm just like, when are we gonna be together? So it's, <laughs> it's gonna be great. All right, you guys, I think that's it for another episode of Viewer Takeover. Thank you so much for hanging around and uh, and and listening to us uh, shoot the shit about stuff that we probably don't know that much about. Uh, make sure you submit your viewer takeover questions in our Discord by clicking the link in the description and leaving them in the viewer takeover channel. Or you can just leave it underneath this video right here with the hashtag viewer takeover, all one word. We'll find it and look for it next week. As AJ says, if you want to join the GameCat Dojo, then make sure you put hashtag GameCat no. in the comments below after you've changed your name so we can give you a shout out on next week's show like we did for our Uncle Jesse from Full House. Uh, <laughs> also send your viewer takeover introductions without parole at gmail.com. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, AJ. And don't forget the new share of the week. Send in those gameplay clips. Oh yeah, anything funny, yeah. anything you want to show off, do it. Yeah, you can send, you, you, I think the best way to do that, it seems like, because I've got a Gmail account, uh, is just upload it to upload it unlisted to YouTube, uh, and then send me the link. I'll download it from there. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, AJ. My name is Brian. This is Viewer Takeover, and we're out. Take over Monday night. Got myself a hangover. Talking about VR questions for about over like 30 minutes. Like when is Gorn coming out? When is Iron Man VR coming out? Need to know now. Please tell me now. I need to know right now. When is Gorn coming out? Iron Man VR. PS5, PS VR 2. Please tell me more. You would take over. We don't have answers, but we will talk for about 30 minutes about what we know. And I hope that's good enough. Let's go. You would take over. Woo!